What's up, everybody? Welcome back to this week's episode of The Kitchen. Um, excited to have you here. Thank you for tuning in week week after week and listening. Um, this week, once again, is a Written By You series. You guys submitted some hilarious stories that we can't wait to dive into. Uh, you had Nate and I crying at a few of these. Um, we apologize in advance for not taking your side every single time, but we always like to play devil's advocate <laughs> and just uh, kind of really dive into the weeds of what you're trying to say here. Um, on that same note, we appreciate your grammar, your punctuation, and your lengthy paragraphs. <laughs> it's making it really fun. Uh, today's episode, there's a lot of stories, but we're calling this episode Photographer Karens and a Distraught Efficient. <laughs> And the efficient story is at the end, and it's uh, it's it's worth listening all the way through, regardless of Nate and I's uh, sidetrack tangents that have nothing to do with anything, other than uh, just kind of like that dogging up when we see a squirrel. Uh, but yeah. thank you guys for listening. Some your stories below, and uh, how do we transition? Oh yeah, <laughs> let's cook. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Welcome back to the kitchen, Nathan. Oh, welcome, Jacob. Thank you, you ready? for the very generous. Yeah, I wasn't quite ready. I was staring off into the distance, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready now. Yeah, I just uh, I got I, like I got to prep my, to be my my kitchen voice after like part of this job. You just don't talk <clears throat> to people every day, and so yeah. sometimes when you pick up the phone, you're like warm up your voice. Yeah, like, oh, no, wow, I feel I gotta, you on that. I gotta, I gotta talk. Yeah, some days for no reason, like my voice, I just don't have a voice for yeah. no reason. I think it's because I just go a whole day without talking or something. Yeah. So <clears throat> clearing the voice now. Also, one of those days where I feel like my face never woke up with my body. You know those days? Mm, I feel you on that one. Yeah. What is that? Is that yeah, lack yeah. of water, lack of sleep, or just like a rough start? Probably a little mixture of both. Probably a little mixture of both. How much sleep did you get last Probably night? Like seven hours, seven healthy hours. Like seven hours in bed or like yeah. sleeping? Yeah, I sleep. I hours. went to bed at like one and woke up at like eight. And then I went right to so the you, gym. You probably got like five and a half hours of sleep. No, I was in bed before. I was in bed at 11. <laughs> oh, you were in bed at 11. Yeah, and you but I, I went to bed at one. <laughs> Actually, I think I was in bed at 10 and I went to bed at one. You were just on your phone for a couple hours? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah regardless he still probably got like five hours of sleep five and a half no but i know i went to bed at like by i, I know i was asleep by one because i like kind of put my phone away around 12 30 and i turned over and I yeah but of, anything after that from one one to eight seven hours but you know deep rest oh deep I rest mean, you're, yeah you're, yeah yeah you, you didn't have the best night of sleep but i could have i mean if you let's you're let's supposed to have eight hours up. so I have, if i would have had one more it still like wouldn't have made that big of a difference right no, it it definitely does. One Each person hour. is different. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, slept great, but yeah. Yeah, well, well, good. I think it's also the time I go to bed. I think I need to wake up or go oh, to bed. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just, I just get sucked in, man. Get sucked into the phone. Yeah, no, I feel you. Ever since I I bought this this Whoop thing, which is basically a glorified sleep tracker, it just makes you painfully, painfully aware of how yeah. much you actually don't sleep and how much you do need to sleep. And so, yeah, whenever I, I went to bed at like, let's say like 11 and I woke up at seven, you know, that's eight hours. I'm like, yeah. okay, sick. But like the timing of the actual being consistent with the day, right. the hour, every, like everything has got to be dialed in because if you just start fluctuating, like you notice your sleep goes way down. Like there've been times where I've been in bed, like asleep for eight hours. So, so, so right. I guess, but got like six hours of sleep actually. So hmm. It fluctuates. I should get one of those. Last week, I think I was doing five hours every single night. I, I, I actually recommend you don't get one because okay. you're about to be a father. You're about to be <laughs> a dad. True. And uh, at some point, it's actually going to like make you uh, go backwards, I'd say. And you're just going to be like, oh, my whoop said I only got four hours of sleep or I'm like in the red recovery. I'm yeah. actually dying. I can't do anything. And yeah. it kind of reverse psychology. So I should be prepping my, my sleepless nights. Continuing yeah. my unhealthy yeah. patterns of uh, mm. being awake. Yeah, you're on a great track. Yeah. Great track. Doing well. Yeah, we'll yeah. Call it father yeah, prep. Yeah. Stick um, with it. Father prep. I also like, it was like 12 o'clock and I was just like parched. And I went downstairs and opened my fridge and we have this uh, this light lemonade. 
and mm. I just like drank a glass of it, and it hit so hard. It was so Man. Hard. I never Those drink lemonade, drinks. and I never buy that, but we bought it just because Kenzie wants some juice, and man. Cause you, did you do that TikTok? Maybe we sent to each other that TikTok of where that guy like shows like you could drink this much. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the equivalent is like, this, like one can of Coke or a, like fifty cans right. of Diet Coke or something like that, right. or like yeah, the yeah. lemonade and limeade stuff. That was like that made me feel better about buying the juice, knowing I'm gonna drink yeah. maybe a glass like a couple times a week when I just need like a punch of sugar. <laughs> yeah, or like no, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, I know what you but, mean. Absolutely. Yeah. What what is uh what's what's Kenzie craving lately? What's her uh, what's her go to? Just food. Just just feed me. Just food. <laughs> yeah. Like fast. Is it like a fast no. food phase? Is it like just she? I feel like the it, first few trimesters it was like she wanted like random things. Like it was like creamy hot foods, like mac and cheese mm-hmm. or creamy chicken or pasta. Mm-hmm. And then like for a little bit, I feel like it was just like crappy fast food. Like one day she's like, I just need a chicken sandwich. I'm like. I'm like, oh, like a Chick-fil-A. She's like, no, no, no. I need like a crappy chicken sandwich. I'm like, like McDonald's. I'm like, like a McDonald's or like an Arby's chicken sandwich. She's like, yeah. I'm like, Ooh. okay. So I got her a crappy <laughs> chicken sandwich. And she's like, this is so good. This trimester, I feel like it's just like, just feed me, you know? Just, I just need to be. Just anything goes. I just need to be eating. Um, she's trying to be pretty healthy too, and which is mm. nice because I'm trying to be healthy. So she's kind of eating whatever I make. Yeah. This weekend, I made uh, smash burgers from scratch, which is really good. I saw that. Um, Those looked really good. And then I attempted to make old-fashioned cake donuts, which was a an act, actual project, and I, I'll never do that again. Hey, some of, hey, some of them in the batch looked pretty good, though. No, they did. I bet like, they and they tasted, tasted fine. They were just like, okay, well, four yeah. hours of work, I don't think I, I would rather just go buy them for two bucks at Harmon's, so... Was it four hours of work or, like... It was, yeah. 20 minutes of actual hands-on time and waiting? Uh, A lot of... No, I'd probably say it was probably two hours of just staying in the kitchen doing stuff and then just waiting for oil to heat up or really dough to cool. Yeah, yeah it was just, doesn't... just yeah. So I don't know. But I love cooking. Dough doesn't mess around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would have <laughs> if you would have said anything otherwise, this podcast would be in jeopardy. Even though we're not chefs, but yeah. it's called the kitchen. So you, <laughs> I hate you, gotta, cooking. you gotta like <laughs> I hate being in the kitchen. <gasps> Re- quick rename the no, podcast. Like, genuinely, um yeah, I I find a lot of solace in the kitchen <laughs> here on the kitchen yeah. Nathan, with you and also in my kitchen. I know. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's, it's my happy place. It's a beautiful metaphor a nice for this slow, podcast. Yeah. I've been finding a lot of solace in the kitchen. Solace, solace, solace in the kitchen, like kind of in the early mornings, oh, kind of yeah. just waking up and just like maybe like prepping a pizza or a, a bread or something like that. It's, it's, it's nice. Those quiet mornings. Yeah. Speaking of which, we gotta have pizza. Sorry, I gotta text my wife. I just remember I left the kitchen a disaster after my breakfast this morning, and I don't want her to touch Speaking it. Speaking of the kitchen, <laughs> one second. Ah, so that's all. Oh no, I, I feel you on that one. The kitchen, I got it. Because you know you're in trouble if if you uh, you walk upstairs and it's just spot oh, clean. It's a wreck. You can't like, put oh, a plate boy. anywhere. You can't put a plate <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> uh, good thing you sent that text. All right, let's all get right. into the meat into of it. this dish really sink our teeth into this one i'm pumped about it which is more written by you stories you guys you are starting to take this assignment hella seriously we Mm -hmm. are all for it every single one of these stories is like multi-paragraphs so love it also i got dms from uh somebody who claimed like three of our last stories um i forget which stories exactly i'll find them they were it was it's just so funny finding out who actually and we were right about the ones where we're like i'm just assuming this is a female talking if they ever like a little bit more um uh you know courteous about in the way they they (laughs) they type it out yeah they're a little more kind about how they talk about things it's like we always just assume it's a female we were right (laughs) so 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 that might say something about stereotypes i don't know (laughs) it Um, speaks volumes i guess yeah so let's dive in you guys want to submit your stories link below um seriously like if you have just horrible wedding stories you want to get off your chest and you want us to actually talk about them please we'd love to listen to them all right all right do you want me to start off yeah the bridezilla is one. Oh, i got the vendor meals i'm not sure how mine are categorized oh i have mine sorted by category here i'll delete the sort okay bridezilla nice 
All right. This is a big one. Judas. I think these are all pretty big. Yeah. So hopefully uh, hopefully you're listening to this on like your, your commute to work yeah. or something. <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. I'm going to right. talk all nice and ASMR on the mic here. Okay. The first sentence. I hope I'm able to recap this well and with proper grammar because... <laughs> Because <laughs> you know we'll destroy you if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, genuinely. So this is from... Also, I want to get this out there. Never mind. Um, no, say it. Say it. Well, I just like... This whole idea of like reading stories... Someone sent me a, a message. <laughs> and I don't want to make waves. <laughs> but I, just, I feel the need to defend ourselves. Not that anyone... Of course, like no one Wait, said were anything. They, were they attacking you? Like, yeah. Were they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? No one's ever said anything, right? Everyone's loved this podcast. And then that one comment comes in and it, obviously it triggers me when mm-hmm. hundreds of people have been nice about it. So I just want to defend this platform really yeah. quick. Um, we block out the the hundreds of positives yeah. for the one negative. Yeah, yeah. The accusation was that we are copying the vendor table. Um, and to address that, we are. But yeah. when we conceived when, I, when we conceived the kitchen a year ago, I didn't even know the vendor table existed. And I think that just goes to say that there's no such thing as an original thought. (laughs) Right. And the vendor table wasn't the first to create a podcast centered around reading stories from their viewers. Um, I had this idea from a podcast my wife listens to called The Bad Broadcast. (laughs) And I was like, oh, I like how she engages their audience. I'm sure she copied it from somebody, copied from somebody. So for those who think we're just trying to be a off-brand version of the vendor table, we're not. this written by you series you could say is similar to their written by you series um and it's also similar to a billion other written by you series on a billion other podcasts Mm so that's my defense that's all hey good news is they didn't leave a a bad review we still got five star review baby and let's go uh i love the vendor table like oh i'll I'll be the first one to send people away from our podcast to theirs and say go listen to them they are hilarious and dude they're incredible amazing conversation so Shout out to the vendor table. Love what they do. Would absolutely love a collaboration one day. That'd be so fun. So that's my yeah. defense. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. For that one follower is going to be like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <Thank> well. <laughs> and now everyone's going to be start... like, well, who's the vendor table? And they're going to also... start listening to the vendor table instead of this one. So <laughs> yeah. we just, we just, I don't lost. care. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, I don't care. So if you want to give, that was a, that was a grace warning. Um, we love feedback, but just so you know, if it is like things like that, uh, moving forward, today was a grace period, but moving forward, I will happily say your name moving forward on this podcast, but who mm. said that? So I don't care. Yeah. That's where Cancel. I'm at. <laughs> Cancel. Cancel. <laughs> All right. Bridezilla story from a videographer. So I accepted a wedding under a photographer's company at a lower rate than I would normally take in good faith. Uh, in good faith that it would lead to a good connection. First mistake. <laughs> so, okay. So this videographer is working for a photography company. Um, man, I want to talk about that as a business practice in depth after this. So remind me about that mm. first paragraph. Yeah. About a week before the wedding, the bride spoke to the photographer, giving her a list of requests on what is to be captured in the video and what is not. <laughs> To name that a few, sucks. she wanted nothing of the groom's family or friends. That's a wild request. Healthy. Sounds like a this healthy This video will be about me. <laughs> <laughs> she asked to show only her family and just barely and to have a sprinkle of the groom throughout, claiming it was at the groom's request. Okay, well, if it was at the groom's request, okay. that's different. All right. Great. Uh, come wedding day, I capture everything as I normally would just in case she changed her mind later down the line, which I probably would do the exact same thing, honestly. Same. I wouldn't have changed the thing, honestly. Yeah. She wouldn't allow the photographer and I to go capture the groom, even though we had more than enough time and he was in the same hotel. We then do the first, what if they're in there doing cocaine and that was the real reason? They didn't Dude, if, if this all comes back to cocaine somehow, I swear. Episode three of mentioning cocaine. Uh, we then do the first look and capture some bridles at, help me here, Viz, 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 Vizcaya? Vizcaya? Vizcaya in Miami, Florida. Anybody? <laughs> Viz, Vizcaya? Vizcaya? Yeah. Which is basically yeah. only her acting like a supermodel at a solo brand photo shoot. One of those brides. I can picture this nice. bride 
meticu- uh, meticulously in detail. What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, let's just say in detail. Let's just say that. What is metic? Wait, what is meticulous? It's meticulously is like when fine you, attention to detail, like meticulous. Okay, so I'm a, I'm meticulous. meticulously picturing this bride is what I should have said. All right. At ceremony and reception, you could feel the tension. Everyone in attendance was on his side and would make quite a bit of side comments that were not hidden very well. Gosh. When she decided to make the bar an open bar, they all refused to use it, and the mother of the groom had to be silenced a few times by the groom. I'm so confused here. <laughs> I'm I'm a little confused as well. Keep going, though. What shifted? <laughs> what? Yeah, where did the, the side yeah. comments? Come okay. to the edit. She continuously asked to be involved, which I did. I sent her song options and kept her in the loop on the process as best I could. Mid-busy season and holidays. You're a better person than I am. Fast forward to after the video is sent. She loves some of it and wanted over two out of five of the minutes removed. The few scenes of the groom, gone. Anything of her family, <laughs> gone. And songs changed. Naturally, I told her this would be a fee, but the photographer had nothing in her contract to defend this point. The bride went on and on about how she will not pay. I'm sorry to say, Jake. Wow, it's crazy that she knows and read this story. Oh, straight to you. <laughs> what if you read this story? I don't know. That would have been wild. <laughs> the bride went on and on about how she will not pay. I'm sorry to say, Jake, I broke and gave her the new video. She knows I'm going to be disappointed mm. in her. Again, I'm assuming this is a woman. <laughs> I don't know why. It sounds like it. I'm assuming. I don't know why, but Maybe it, it, it feels like that. Maybe it's because men just aren't that kind and they would say no. It was a little too nice. A little too nice. And if nice this is a man, I'm not calling you a woman. I'm just saying like, wow, you're really kind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're very, a very kind stereotype to have. Yeah. Um, this is my first Bradzilla, and I will have to say I learned quite a bit. Man, we should have a follow-up with you on the podcast about what you learned because I want to hear from Schedule. you what you learned before I dive into what I would teach you about this story. First off, are you disappointed in this person? Yes. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, if, I'm if not that... necessarily <laughs> yeah. disappointed. I want to know if more than one revision was happening or if it was yeah. just like, oh, yeah, I changed it. I would be Here disappointed if that last sentence wasn't in there. If that last? Oh, like, about it being the yeah. first Bridezilla? Well, if they yeah, if they we all learned. Lear, didn't learn a bit, like if like I like if they if yeah if yeah. they didn't acknowledge that they definitely that they definitely did something wrong, and right. because of that, the bride walked all over him. What's that? <laughs> my favorite meme. Well, well, well. If it's if it's wait, if it isn't the consequences the of my consequence own actions. Of my own actions. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Man. Okay. okay. Wow. So, first thing, first paragraph. Yeah, talk about the first paragraph. She said it was working under the photographer's company at a lower rate than they would normally take it. In good faith, it would lead to a connection, though. Yeah, Nate, how do you feel about being white-labeled? It all depends, I think, on where you're at. If this is my first year, then I'm all about connections, and I can definitely see the value in saying, yeah, like this photographer has a client, and they need a videographer. I would be more inclined to work for it in my first year where I'm really trying to establish my presence with vendors and okay. connections, if I'm anywhere more established, I would say, uh, yeah, that, that, that sucks. You know, like I, I don't want to be white labeled. I want yeah. my own video to be under my brand. So what that, do you, that, that, that would okay. be my take. So let me ask you this. What do you lose in your first, if this is your first, it's your first year and you, to your point, you want to build a better relationship. What do you lose by saying instead, no, but I will give your clients a massive discount, but I want the contract and the content to be owned by my company because I'm in my first year, I need a portfolio, but I'll give them the discount because they have you as a photographer. I would just say... So what do you lose? Maybe, me like it, it just depends. Maybe they didn't have a portfolio, so if they took that route and they said, yeah, send them my way, that client, this bridezilla, would have been referred to a non-existent portfolio and seen, oh, I actually don't want to oh, book this person. It, it probably would have just been easier for the for the but, photographer to say, yeah, like we handle photo and video if you hire me. But then if it's under photographer's brand, you still don't have a portfolio because it's now the photographer's video. That would probably be worked out between you and the photographer. Hopefully, I bet they'd let you keep say, the video, right? This? right? Yeah, right, right, right. I mean, 
you and I, we've been white labeled in our first year, not of videography, but in this past year of doing like commercial work, we, mm-hmm. we were white labeled. Mm-hmm. Of course it was working for something a lot bigger, Yeah, but, um, a little bit different. Yeah. But yeah, it, it did open doors though. But yeah, we did kind of feel that, that, that squeeze of like, dang, right. I don't think we can post this even though we want to. Right. And also I think, I think to come back to the end of the story about that first paragraph is, um, it, when you go that route, you lose a lot of control post production, right? Because mm, then even right. all the questions about like the, who the bride talks to, like I don't want to be a, I don't want to have to play telephone with the photographer. Like the photographer hears something and they tell me, I don't want to have to deal with that. I just want to do the thing my way, and I'll edit it my way, and I can have my contract in place. If you do want to go this route, which I do, I think I agree with Nate here that um, it could be very beneficial if you have no portfolio and you really just you know need the in. Um, to still have a contract in place that you add mm-hmm. in as a clause in the photographer's contract. Mm-hmm. So that way you still have creative freedom over the video. Um, and that right. way that you can have some backup when the bride makes these wild requests that you can say, actually, per the contract, uh, first revision's free, but moving on, it's going to be this much money um, and so forth. Uh, and yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Wait, well, well that, that raises a good question though, because yeah, we, we do teach that the first revision is always free. I yeah. believe that is if, totally yeah, warranted. If it's like, if it's like, like shot changes, if it's like, uh, it's like, Hey, could you remove right. this and fix this? Like, right. that's what I'm saying free in our contract. It's like, if you want to full re-edit, that's, that costs more. Right. I think that needs to be clarified yeah. is a revision is completely different than a rework. Like yes. this person is saying we need two of the five minutes just completely removed. The few, <laughs> the few scenes of the groom gone. Like, how dare you even put the groom in this video? Take it out. Like, that's a that's what a, a complete selfish that's not, bride, bro. <laughs> seriously, like you're married to the. Like, and and I wonder bi- if. <laughs> I say, I say, easy. <laughs> easy. I say, um, I look her in the eyeballs. And I say, I say. <laughs> I Sorry. love that, man. I'm, I'm going to go down I'm the quoting, key and peel. Uh, key and peel guys, not yeah, I'm quoting Key and Peele, guys. I'm definitely going down the Key and Peele Same. rabbit hole after this. But yeah, it, it, a rework is different than a revision. And that's, I, yeah, to your point, like that's where it gets messy if you're working under someone else and you didn't do anything to take care of your side of the contract of adding in a clause uh, because you really don't have any leverage to say, great, I can do this, but it's going to cost X amount of dollars. You're kind of just winging right. it in the dark. And yeah, with someone like this, it doesn't sound like a bridezilla of this attitude would really bode well with you saying, Hey, by the way, this is going to cost this much. Like, right. ugh, it gets messy. So right. And to you quote, learn from your mistakes. Yes, you really do. And that's the most important thing. And to quote, uh, our good friend, Samuel Hansen, just listening to his podcast yesterday with, or he was a guest on a, another friend of our Muka's podcast, which is amazing. Um, mm-hmm what's it called? The, uh, the fulfillment fulfillment. podcast, amazing podcast, capital M E N because it's for for men. Sam talks about, uh, basically it's the principle being prepared and how you can call it paranoia for that 5% chance this thing might happen. But is it worth risking over a 5% chance to not be prepared? Right. For if that 5% Mm -hmm. does strike, would you rather be prepared or not be prepared? And I think that's why our contracts have evolved so heavily over five years is because sometimes like something will happen. I'm like, okay, I got to take care of that for future contracts, even if it never happens again. Or that thought will uh, avalanche or snowball into this like, what if this happens? Well, what's the odds of that? Like, I don't know, but what if it does? You got to have that covered. Um, Right. And that would have saved your life and just... That way you're not the bad guy. It's like, yeah, remember this thing you signed? Just reference this and let me know what I want to do moving forward, you know? Yeah. Um, Also, I would have just edited the video the way I wanted to, and I never, ever, I never have, never will allow my clients to be involved in the editing process, the music process, none of that. Right. They are hiring me to do my job because they like what I do, and I will do it for them. Mm -hmm. Um, The most of them be involved, like if they had a request about wanting to be the front and center of their video, um, I'll make them a trailer or a reel that highlights the wedding the way they're asking with the song they want. Um, cause that's mm-hmm. very easy to whip up like a 30 second trailer. Super quick. You know what I mean? Like it, it takes like almost yeah. no effort. Just draw clips from the highlight, put it in there, all the drama shots of the bride. And then moving forward, just like, here's the full film documents the day. Um, and if the groom requests all my family in a video, then that's his loss, you know, and I think right. I'll regret that. Right. Um, 
So that's I, all. So I, I think you a, learned a lot. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a perfect segue into, and I'm sure you agree with this, but I would say looking back over over my career, like 99% of the time, when a client says this is you know the shot list, this is what I want. You film this, don't film this, film this, that. 99% of the time, and this might sound wrong, but I just don't really change anything. I just show up and I do exactly what I've already done because if they are coming to me to hire me, they've seen my work, they know how I film weddings. And right. most clients don't really know exactly what they want. They have an idea, maybe, but that idea falls into why they are hiring you. They obviously picked you for a reason. So right. if they're saying like, don't film the groom, I'm still gonna film the groom. Like I'm, I'm still gonna do everything. Capture this specific detail, those, sure, that, that, that's helpful to know. But if it's like, yeah, the details are really important to me. Like, make sure you capture them. Like, mm -hmm. great. I always do. You know, mm -hmm. I, I hardly ever change my workflow mm -hmm. unless it's very, very specific. No, yeah, absolutely. And the ones who actually know how those shots are captured, like if you're filming a photographer or a videographer's wedding, it's funny because when we do those weddings, they're the most hands-off people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, they're yeah. never like, hey, 100%. I want this shot and I want it this way. They're all just like, no, just do your thing. Right. They get it. Do your thing. You know, it's yeah. just trust, which I love. But I'm, I'm just glad this uh, videographer learned. Um, yeah. I think especially it's crucial to learn those lessons because I think she said, or they said, excuse me. <laughs> um, I mean, they didn't say it was in their first year because she wanted to make a connect or they wanted to make a connection. So I don't know how new they are yeah. to this business, but um, regardless, I'm glad you learned that lesson early on. Um, in my first year, a photographer tried to white label me, not like in a s slimy way. She just, Sleazy, we yeah. really enjoyed working together and she's like, I just want to like Courtney. No, it was another photographer <laughs> and she, I just want to bake you into my packages and I, and then I'd love to hire you to be on my team. Um, and I had no portfolio and it was an awesome opportunity yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, and she was so nice and she's like, I just want, I'll, yeah. like, I want you to be one of my hires because she outsourced a lot of her company, like to photographers and stuff. Right. But I was just like, oh, I just want to do my own thing, you know. But I, but right. the exchange was instead. I just set up a deal. Like if you book somebody with me, I'll give them a discount, so your clients are happy, and I'll give that discount towards you, so you get a referral yeah. commission type thing. So there's ways yeah. to win without having to sacrifice your contract or you yeah know, things like that. And, and it depends. Like when I was in in college, you know, a full time student, I think I would have dreamed of being white labeled if I was I like a consistent <laughs> videographer of someone who's getting a ton of leads. Like if they just bring me on, I don't have to do any work, and I shoot a wedding for a couple thousand bucks. Like yeah, I didn't have to do any marketing. Nate, nothing. let's say so, let's say our business dreams are gone. Let's say our plans out the window. Everything's relevant. Just like don't think about our future at all. If you were at right now today in this point in your career to be white labeled by somebody and become someone some videographer's full time shooter, which company would it be? I think my first me, question to you, my, oh. my first question to you is what business plans are you talking about for us? Because we're just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying don't we think don't about runaway any. vows at all. I'm just saying if someone were to offer you position, I know, I know, I know. Regardless yeah. of the money, who would it be? Oh man. Unfortunately, it would be for a group that I have zero portfolio and zero Tolman qualifications Media. for. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Revitalize no, like Tolman all... Media. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I see all these like, inst like for example, you know, Bach, Bach visuals, Bach yeah. visuals, like he's shooting like F1 races and stuff yeah. like that. That would be tight if That'd he cool. had like a branch and he's like, hey man, there's this race going on in Vegas. I can't make it. Can you show up and shoot? Like, it probably wouldn't be weddings. Like, I would just mm -hmm. love to get in that. If it was for weddings, um, dude, white label me any day for any of the people we worked with at Fountain Blue. Yep. Larev, KEJ, 31 Films, anyone there. Yeah, my, I'd say my, my top four, maybe in this order, maybe not in this order, but actually probably not in this order. Just in general, Larev, 31 Films, yep. KEJ, and Film Poets. Film poets, man. Those four are just like titans to me. I, and then if I, if, I was if, gonna if say, uh, Fiori could could stand me, <laughs> I would love to learn from her as well. <laughs> well, no, I was about to say if Fiori did hire us, I it's just such a unique style. Like I know, I'd just be so curious to watch. Ah, if we could shoot like that and just replicate that, then absolutely, actual I, I would, artist. Which through the lens, peep, nope. peep emoji. <laughs> Moving on to right. the next story. Let's move to the next one. <laughs> okay. 
awkward moments. Man, we haven't had an awkward moment me, in a while. Let me readjust here. All right. Okay. This is from a videographer, Awkward Moments. Wait, let me it go says, water. Yeah, I need a water too, man. Okay. Okay, awkward moments. To say this moment was awkward is by far an understatement. A few months ago, I filmed a wedding at a venue that was very familiar to me. And with a solid photographer buddy by my side, I was feeling pretty confident about how things would turn out. Wow, it sounded like a good day so far. (laughs) Everything's going smoothly until we hit the first look between the bride and the groom. First, the bride was feeling anxious. Man, if this turns to cocaine, I I swear. swear. (laughs) The bride was feeling anxious, so she took anxiety pills that were not prescribed to her, but to one of her bridesmaids. That smelled, that sounds smart. As the day continued, she began to feel less anxious. And because of that, she then decided to take THC gummies about an hour or so later, also not prescribed to her. And it gets Wait, the a bride lot worse. did. Yeah, the now, bride. I'm she, no she's expert, popping but I think non-prescription pills. Pre-ceremony rumbly tumblies are net are are common. Normal, yeah. Is I this not wanna... how opioid addiction starts? Yeah, I don't want to discredit anxiety at all, but I do want. Same. I do bet money that if she could have just got through the ceremony everything would have been fine <laughs> yeah taking <laughs> non-prescription pills off is plate. crazy but i get it yeah. a lot of jitters that day okay sure 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 oh it gets worse are you ready for this jacob it gets worse right before the entrance to the reception she begins to drink many alcoholic beverages fast forward to the first dance about 15 minutes about 15 ish minutes into the reception, the bride stumbling, putting a screeching halt to the whole reception before making a, <laughs> making. Now I'm no doc. Now I'm no bathroom. doctor, but <laughs> mixing She's THC the, the with anxiety wubbies. pills and alcohol does not sound like a good idea. <laughs> Man, total just bowel movement. That's right like here. three intense About, narcotics at once. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 30 to 45 minutes later, as the photographer and I are eating dinner, I already know where this is going, man. They're going to have to put down their their food. The bride walks out of the bathroom in PJs. I didn't see that coming. And heads towards one of the houses on the venue. We were told by some of the groomsmen that she be, <laughs> she began vomiting everywhere and had to leave the reception. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Two hours of absolutely nothing goes by with still no response from the bride. We were then told to go home three hours before the end of the wedding because the bride fell asleep and couldn't finish the wedding. We got no reception speeches, no parent dances, and hardly any footage of the bride and groom at the reception. Although the couple loved the final video I put together, and there were no complaints. What? P.S. The bride messaged me the following day and told me she couldn't remember anything after the first look between her and her husband. Wow. (laughs) I'm so glad they had the first look, at least. Same. But I'm also looking at this saying... I wouldn't be complaining if I'm going home three hours early. No, that would be a dream scenario. <laughs> Sounds like a dream. Please give me, give me this booking. Oh, it's so sad for her, bro. <laughs> that really I can't is. Imagine your big day that you just planned, and that's so awkward. But, I, I think my favorite part is the first sentence, like solid, you know, great photographer, usual venue, just everything is great. In the park. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think this this speaks volumes to the importance of having a wedding videographer that a lot of people just don't understand because imagine being this bride Mm -hmm. who does it you know hopefully most brides aren't overdosing on on opioids here um and hopefully they remember something about their wedding but imagine being this bride and she doesn't remember anything and she only has the pictures to live by instead of the video Mm -hmm. like the video speaks volumes that's that's the emotion so I, i i can only imagine there were no complaints because you know, she was living her wedding day. <laughs> right. She and how can you complain when you it. know what yeah. happened, you know? Right. Right. Like, it's one thing to, like, not get things back that happened. Like, where is this in my video? But it's one other thing. It's like, you know what? I sabotaged this day. I'm I'm in love with the, what you could throw together. And and yeah. props to you, man, uh, or woman, for... Or... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, why do you think this one is a man? <laughs> I don't know. Just the language of it. It's just kind of like, yeah, usual venue, the vibes. solid photographer no, I was... buddy. I mean, girls don't say solid photographer buddy. <laughs> uh, that's that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Girls would say a, a, a solid There's definitely a dude writing girly. this. Yeah. Um, like, props to you, brother, <laughs> for <laughs> making an amazing <laughs> film. Like I know a lot, I know a person with a lot of videographers who have been like, "Well, like, that sucks. sucks. Like this is gonna suck," but you're like, "No, like it's still your day, 
and I'm gonna make you a beautiful edit that you love and that sh- and that they yeah. loved. So, right. Props to you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> my bro, my broski. Think of a uh, sketch's voice. Sketch, <laughs> brother. Hello, brother. <laughs> What's up, brothers? <laughs> He's taking over the internet, man. I love him. That's right, crazy. Next one. Awkward. That's definitely awkward. But yeah, what a what a great ending. Fully fed, three hours early, you go home. All right, I'll take it. From a videographer, this is an anti-photographer story. Here we go. Oh, it's been a while since we've had one Wait, of these. This takes place in Eastern Idaho. If this is about Courtney J. Photo, dude, we're <laughs> about kidding. to throw hands. How could you ever have a war with with Courtney? No, I, I can't imagine. Crazy if it was though. All right. When I was getting started doing weddings, I was second shooting a number of times with a friend. We were in Eastern Idaho. What is Eastern Idaho? Okay, Boise. And traveled oh, traveled to Boise oh, to film. to Boise. The venue was a crazy huge Airbnb with an awesome backyard and a beautiful setup. Hold up. Love some backyard weddings. Okay. We get there, talk with the bride and the photographer, and it went well. Little did we know that the photographer had created an itinerary of all the pictures she would take down to every five minutes. <laughs> I applaud the ambition, but I will tell you now, she shot herself in the foot. <laughs> um, she was taking pictures the whole time. It's crazy. It's almost like she was paid to take pictures the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. She's a photographer. <laughs> Man, can you imagine being hired to take pictures for, 20, for <laughs> the wedding day and then you just take pictures for the wedding day? Um, I'm talking like eight hours of pictures. <laughs> oh, so like 10 hours? A usual day? <laughs> Sorry. sorry. Wow. Sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. We're, right, we'll, I know what we'll you're trying. I know what you're saying. I'm just being. Yeah, yeah. 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 Me and my buddy got what we could because you can only want so much of picture posing in your video. Mm-hmm. Even the photographer second shooter was getting tired of finding all the family members for these pictures and taking pictures. Are we talking? <laughs> okay. Last How many thing. pictures? <laughs> Complaining about doing your job that you're being paid to do is wild to me. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get to that later. Yeah, yeah. When the photographer sees us not filming, she lost it on my buddy. Again, the, the word buddy is a very clear indication. This is a dude. Clear yeah, indication. this is a dude this. Um, He went outside. He was outside. I was inside. We switched, and he literally tells me, she is a B. <laughs> I feel like that is important to include. So <laughs> your buddy, professionally, called another working vendor the B word. He tells me to look like I'm filming so she doesn't lose it on me. Okay, why are you guys feeling threatened <laughs> about this photographer? On? She's not the planner. She's not the bride. Do your job and don't care about what anyone else thinks, especially other vendors. Yeah. Um, this lady was so focused on her itinerary, which she fell behind on anyway. I got out there and she tells me to start filming. Is she paying you? Are you ho- no? I cooperated, and there was so much tension between the photographer and my buddy. All right, we gotta <laughs> find a lots, new word. Lot, lot, lot of, lots lot of my buddies. Here. Yeah. Come the reception, both photographers started drinking and were wildly flirty, or weirdly flirty. Hmm. The second shooter was getting a little handsy, so I left my car. Oh. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Stay safe, brother. <laughs> he left to his. Car. Didn't even tell to my buddy. Car. As we were leaving, we noticed photographers dancing and having a great time. One of the weirdest interactions I've ever had with photographers. Wait, wait, wait. So I need I need help understanding the last yeah. three. So the <laughs> photographer started dr- <laughs> photographers started drinking and were weirdly flirty. Yeah. The second shooter was getting a little handsy, so handsy. this person left to their car. Didn't Nate, even tell my buddy. For so is it the second sheltered. shooter buddy? Yes. Who for is getting handsy viewers. with the photographer? No, no, no. It was the second shooter. Oh. Nathan, for our, uh, maybe our more naive viewers, uh, tell us all what handsy means. <laughs> well, Jacob, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much. N- no, I don't know. I don't know. I was hoping you would laugh so we could, <laughs> I could break that sentence up. <laughs> no, I was waiting for you to break. Tell us in a wedding scenario. <laughs> give, us, give us an example of what it is. Well, Come with you say handsy in this in this situation. I would Im- I, I'm imagining these photographers on the dance floor, uh, a guy and a girl photographer, and you know the song "Low" by Flo Rida comes on, and they start doing the like 
low, low, low part. And they're like bumping it down and his hands are like on her butt. And she's like, <laughs> bumping <laughs> That's it down. <laughs> they're bumping it down to the, you know, the part, the low, low, that, you know, that part they're literally when you watch people, they're, they're, yeah. they're like bumping down, bumping you know? down. Sure. That's what I was picturing when I read this story that, okay. you know, the song flow rider low. So okay. what were you picturing Jake? That, Please explain sure, my that. Yeah, no, yeah, that. yeah. 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> Here, here hang yeah, on. Sure. I still have issues with the last couple sentences. Okay. This person left and they didn't tell their buddy. The right. first so so what what's happening here is the first shooter left. I mean you're being let's paid, just say right? hypothetically. But you're being paid. Let's just say hypothetically, you have a second shooter contract and it says like if I'm sexually harassed, I have the right to leave. No questions asked. There, well, but weren't you they're still not, if you call well, this person your buddy? Harassed. Maybe Hansy means different things in western Idaho than it does uh in uh where do you live? Um where do you live? American Eastern Fork, Idaho? Utah. Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well no, well they they weren't are they trying to say these photographers were getting flirty with them and yes, touching them? I think or, so. Oh, That's how I read it. See, I read it as the, way the photographers I, were being handsy with the second shooter who was telling gotcha, the story. Gotcha. Gotcha. You're definitely right. The way I was reading it and my interpretation, which came with the flow rider thing, was the two photographers were oh. being flirty with each other. That's what I was thinking. No, so I like, think the from photographers my point of view, are both female and the and they're videographers the are dudes. both males. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sounds like they're happily married males, or just uh, save themselves yeah. the right person. Gotcha. See that that um, that changes that changes my entire perspective. <laughs> I'm no longer thinking Flo Rida. <laughs> I was I'm so confused. <laughs> I was. I wish you could see my camera. No, I was no, like no, no, staring no. at you. Like, where is he going no, with this? No, I I was I was picturing these two f- videographers watching the two photographers flirt oh, with okay. each other and like yeah no, no I no. think when, they were. When, Hitting on, which is crazy that after being so uh, intolerable all day, they get a little right, bit of alcohol right. and they, they want to make amends right. by I'm uh, guessing, dancing to Flo Rida. No, yeah. I'm guessing by Hansy, they're probably like just laughing at the most like non-funny things and like kind of like slapping you know, them and like hitting them. The like, arm rubs, good. right. Or even just yeah, like, the, like they come yeah. up to you and they have to say, oh, you're so great. And they, they keep caressing. Yeah. Tell me about yourself. Like, oh, your yeah, business. I oh, I love your Instagram. Oh, Oh, you have yeah. more followers than I do. You should give us a shout out. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. This. Hands uh, off. I mean, for for the amount of times you called this lead shooter your buddy, uh, my friend. Yeah. Um, the, the least you could do please. is tell him you're you're heading out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're from Eastern Idaho and you're going to West yeah. Idaho. I'm assuming you drove together, right? Yeah. Yeah. So did you like, leave yeah. with the car? That's wild. I no, he said I left to my car. Didn't even oh, he about. stayed I, in the I'm car. Guessing, yeah, waited for this buddy yeah. to be done. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, a lot of misunderstanding here. At least for me, in the last but couple. Let's of let's sentences. talk about the villain of this here this here story, which is obviously right. this photographer, who, I mean, this one doesn't have a planner, obviously, because if they did have a planner, the photographer would have been blacklisted minute right. one. She's up with her own timeline, right? Um, which we've experienced before, which is just yeah. comical. Yeah. Um, but no, no planner. So the photographer is like, well, I'm going to make my own timeline. Now I think it's perfectly acceptable. And I see it almost at most weddings where photographers bring a long list of family photos because mm-hmm. maybe it's especially in Idaho. Um, I bet they are all from families of eight or 10 people and they all have kids <laughs> with eight or 10 people. It's true. And so it's just like, there's a lot of people to keep track of. And so I, I know, and Courtney does this too, like I, at least I think she does, like they have a list of all the people that the bride has asked for photos. It's usually in their pre-wedding questionnaire, like, okay, list all the people you want photos of and combinations. That way the photographer is not trying to figure out who is who. Um, and then maybe this photographer kind of like broke it down to like minutes so that she knew like, okay, I got an hour for family photos. I got to keep on track by doing these people every, you know, maybe benefit of the doubt. But even then it sounds like the timeline was about the whole day. Which is fine if that's how you have to, you know, manage your day. But I think where the photographer went wrong and uh, offensive, I would even say, is thinking that the videographers are her equals um, and that they work for her and that she can boss them around. Yes, they're Mm. equal in the sense that they're both vendors being paid to capture a day, but they don't have to, you don't have to collaborate. Like it's obviously the good thing to do, but you also should trust 
that they're professional and can do their job without you micromanaging them. Um, and then videographers, my boys, stand up for yourself. Don't be bullied. <laughs> yeah. Just be true to who you, just do your job, be true to it, and just know that you're, you don't need a photographer, you know, to tell you to film mm-hmm. something. It's it, it's giving that uncle who's like, did you get that shot? It's like, yeah. who are you? Anyway, sorry, right. rant over. Well, is there is there any vendor, Jacob, that would be able to influence you to roll your camera or not? Like the planner. If this was us, right? I think it would only be a planner. But I think if a photographer, no, not the a best feeling is when maybe a planner comes up and says, "Hey, I want the shot," and you can say, "I already got it," and you can tell them already all these it. angles. Don't you show them those angles, like, "Oh my gosh, wow, you're amazing." Mm-hmm. Um, if if uh, man, I don't think I've ever had a situation where a vendor has walked up to me and said, "Did you get this shot?" No. Yeah. I think it would have to be. I mean, me- Obviously not doing my job if a vendor has the balls, the cojones to walk up to me and say, hey, film Stones. this. Stones. Usually yeah. it's the uncle or the aunt. Aunt. Yeah, it's always it's always someone who's not a vendor. It's a, it's a family yeah. member. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's only a planner. If a planner tells me that, hey, get this. Then, oh, yeah, sure. Got it. Or absolutely. Right. Like, Bro, dumb. my favorite, to bring it back to why I hate kids at weddings. Um, my favorite is when it's like some random guest on the dance floor who brought their kid. They're not in the bridal party, oh, yeah. but they want you to film their kid dancing. Cause I think it's the cutest thing yeah. ever. And I'm like, yeah. yo, I don't know who you are. I can tell by your attire. You weren't really a part of the main party. Uh, I'm not going to film your two year old, you know, waddling back yeah. and forth. Just pull out your iPhone and you'll have that memory. This is right. not like, this isn't a this wedding isn't video for your film. kid. This is for the couple. Right. And you should have left your kid at home anyway. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Crazy. Right, let's move on. Photographer war we got, indeed. I love a good photographer war. But this next story, we got vendor meals from a videographer. This mm. one says, without reading it, what do you think it's going to be, Jake? Take a take a, take a a guess on what they're going to eat. Okay, I haven't read it. I, I truly haven't. Okay, I haven't read it. I'm guessing yet. it's a styrofoam box of chicken tenders and fries. Which, if that's what you Great get, guess. you are at a good wedding. <laughs> Great, guess. yeah, yeah. Congratulations. What do you Give think it, it is? One. Or have you read it? Already? I'm gonna guess. No, I haven't read it. I haven't read it. Uh, I'm gonna guess like the the wedding guests get some buffet. Okay. Of, like, yep. You know, there's like salmon. Yep. Maybe. Salmon or steak? Uh, yeah, I forgot. Salmon or steak? Some yeah. like really high end. I'm gonna guess they are gonna get like some, like maybe something. Yeah, like plastic cup mac salad with a club okay that's like left over from the day before that's what i'm gonna leftovers guess. Okay. that's wild yeah leftovers <laughs> okay actually ha- it's happened to us to say yeah i think i'm cool with cold food i don't mind i get it same but leftover food is where i'm like all right now that is that's wild to me which we've had though right right and I unless i for, remind you of the slimy burrito <laughs> do you remember those the wet yeah. slimy burrito guys if i Gosh. die early in some way it's mm. attributed to me eating a slimy burrito one day well you, you, yeah yeah <sighs> that was disgusting. after nate I, was like no it's fine no no I, well i i can eat a lot of things like i i and i was just so hungry right and yeah. so i i ate this whole thing and then by the time i was done very rarely in my life have i been like man just a human I trash should can not have done that yeah absolutely yeah. Just the wet, slimy. All right, interesting burrito. guesses. Cold. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, videographer, this is from a videographer about vendor meals. It says, I booked a wedding last year, 2023, for a couple in a state park. I had talked on the phone with them, with the photographer, and they were a little stingy with the details, but we figured everything out. And they said that they would have some pretty simple food. I was okay with it because they did offer us, as the vendors, some food. We film and everything went well. I will tell you that this couple was so young. I will challenge that and I'll say, come to Utah and film a wedding and then tell me if this couple is They said they were like maybe 20. Oh, that's old in Utah. (laughs) No, it's not. Come on. (laughs) No, come on. They're getting married at 18 in Utah. Okay. Like maybe 20. I wouldn't be surprised if they were younger. 20, 21's average. Okay. 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 Well, uh, debatable. I mean, if so it's after in a shooting park, with them, I can picture them being 16 for some reason. Is this in <laughs> Alabama? <laughs> Is this in Utah? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. After, sh- after shooting with them, 
The mom of the bride says that someone went to go get the food, not catered, and I kid you not, that they maybe have like 20 Little Caesars pizzas and Walmart cookies. <laughs> now, being part Italian, I, <laughs> I love the preface there. Oh, please. I have nothing against pizza. Get off your high horse. It. But for a wedding, I was kind of disappointed that one, it wasn't a local place. Two, they didn't have Domino's or Papa Murphy's. Three, it was so casual. It definitely made me reevaluate the kinds of weddings I tried to do now. I mean, State Park, what'd you expect, bro? Come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nathan, I yeah, would hey. take Little Caesars and a Walmart cookie over both the meals we guessed. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, dude, Little Caesars hits, man. Little Caesars the claps. Yeah. Little Caesars, say what you want about it. Sometimes that cardboard tastes good. Uh-huh. I do agree that Domino's and Papa Murphy's beat Little Caesars. Yep, Domino's right? especially. But if it's coming out of my own wallet, I'm more inclined to Little Caesars if it's midnight. Yeah, I think Domino's and Papa Murphy's out Pizza the Hut, and then it's Pizza Hut, and then it's Little Caesars. If we're talking about like chains. Wait, wait, wait. Papa wait, wait. John's so is Papa Domino's? John's is like depends on where you get it. Wait, did you say Little Caesars and Papa Murphy's, then Pizza Hut, and then Little Caesars? Yeah. Are you a are you a, a cheese crust kind of guy? No. I like my crust like just to be pizza. crust. I, I, I like that. But if I sometimes I want just like that cheese crust from Pizza Hut, and I like that. Yeah. You want to know what's really good? Slept on is the Costco pizza. Yep, Costco pizza is good. Dude, haven't had it in probably a decade, but solid. Super Same, good. But now I'm thinking about it. And I'm Are literally going to go make pizza Costco today. Pi- oh, okay. You're making pizza. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I'm going to go. Not nah, like pizza fast food after. that wins. As for like homemade pizza, I think you are a close second, like genuinely a close second. It's not even close. And then uh, right above you is just that one pizza I had in uh, uh, Del Mafia Coast. <sighs> Dang, I got to beat that. It was but perfect. But I got to go there. It was perfect. Yeah. Man. Man, but dude, I would be so pleased if we're just sit, f- chilling at a state park, chill wedding, yeah. sounds like, and then they bring in Little Caesars and it's probably those cookies, those sugar cookies, the frosting. I'd be like, this dude, is the I best wedding those. ever. <laughs> dude, that was that was the first thing I thought of, the Walmart, like the frosting, oh, with the little like sprinkles on top. Dude, I, I would love I would take that so fast. Same. 20 Absolutely. boxes too. I'd grab a box, go back with a photographer, we just chill, talk shiz about the couple, and then... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> At least not all the time. It's, it sounds it sounds like it was a pretty uh, low yeah. key wedding. Like yeah. if you're just shooting a state party. All right, let's go. Just get eat some. Dude, pizza, they're twenty years old. Probably the super chill. I mean, come on. Yeah. What a come dream. On. Yeah. I think I think Depends the story. On how much they paid. Yeah, I think this story really is because he's Italian and it and it hit his pride a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's but why. But they did say, uh, being Italian, I have nothing against pizza. Love it for a wedding. Kind of this point, it wasn't a local place. I mean, I get that. Yeah. It kind of depends that. on the wedding but is the if it's time, like if it you, like you, if you're in Chicago, okay, well, okay, to that point, if it's like a Chicago give me the wedding, location, right? If you're yeah. in New York or Chicago and it's like Little Caesars, right. when there's you know there's some, right. or where were we at Iowa? Remember Iowa, dude? So many pizza places. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's just Every like block. okay, well, then get, you know, branch out. It's your wedding day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I agree. That's yeah, that that, that 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 definitely would hurt. I mean that that. I'm I'm imagining Jacob. Yeah, that's like us uh, shooting in Bentonville, Arkansas, right across the street from Wright's Barbecue, and they go and get us like R and R, the equivalent of R and R. I'd be that so, would hurt. I'd be so butthurt. Yeah, that's probably the uh, the equivalent of what this this Italian friend is doing. How funny would our it be, Italian Nate? buddy? <laughs> How funny would it be? <laughs> is if on our website we say we'll film your wedding for free if it's in Bentonville, Arkansas. And then in our contract, we have one clause that says if the food isn't catered, if the food is barbecue, but it's not rights, we have the right to leave. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that was a play on word there. We have the right to leave. The right to I leave. Like That's that. crazy. Yeah, oh, actually, I just uh, remembered. I had Little contract. Caesars last night. I had a slice of it at How this was event it? I was at. It was cheese and it was delicious. Oh. It's like 230 yeah, calories per slice. Had one. Dude, Call yeah. it good. It's Give it great. to me. Give it to me. Yeah. yeah. Give me that pizza, man. All right. Absolutely. All right. Oh, I'm oh excited you get gosh. to read this next one. This one's written for you, dude. It's actually this one's wild written for how you. these stories have matched up to the reader. Um, it is. You yeah. talking about pizza, one called my <laughs> name, now it's about kids. <laughs> It'll be a full circle. The uh, next story has to do something about your personal life, Nate. All right. It just asks me something deeply personal. 
this is a gruesome right. guest story from a videographer, and it says you guys seriously need a category titled "Leave Your Kids at Home." Maybe that's what this episode will just be called. Episode whatever. Leave your kids at home. <laughs> yeah, please. But alas, gruesome guest is close enough. I recently filmed a promo video for an event very similar to a wedding. What does that mean? What could that possibly be? <laughs> uh, bar mitzvah? <laughs> yeah, quinceanera, bar mitzvah. <laughs> Something, uh, okay. This, oh, Google what like an engagement cantata party? is. Oh. Google what cantata, cantata. is. Right, this cantata okay. was essentially just a church, oh, they just told us what it was. A church oh. concert. Sort of, oh, wow, they actually, <laughs> sorry. Did Next they Google search, they define it for it in a whole paragraph. Oh, sort nice. of a miniature version of the Tabernacle Choir. Yes, this happened in Utah. <laughs> Guys, the Motab should not be slept on. Dude, Motab <laughs> One of the best the choirs out there. Dude, go listen uh, to Come Thou Fount by Motab. Tell you'll me cry. you cry. You'll cry. All you atheists would be like, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this particular show was done at a stake. Okay, so, okay. This particular show was done at a stake level. A stake, for those who don't know, in our culture, <laughs> in our church, is like multiple congregations make up one yeah. stake. Um, yeah. Okay. Just like a so, big boundary. Yep. Sorry about my dog. So, quite impressive, because not only did they have a full-fledged choir, but they also had an orchestra, a children's choir, a full array of dancers alike. Sounds amazing. Um so anyway, I filmed a promo video for them, which entailed me being at dress rehearsal where they practiced each song enough times for me to go to the to go get the shots necessary to throw together an advertisement for the real show. Sounds like it was a temple celebration, low key. It does sound it does sound. Outside of me working, I am very kind to kids. Wait. Man, Outside okay. of me working, I am very kind to kids and love them. When I'm in my zone, though, and filming anything, children are the bane of my existence. <laughs> let's go get swig together, my friend. <laughs> I was going to say coffee, but let's go get a swig together and just talk about how much we hate children at weddings. <laughs> then you factor in the fact that at LDS events and weddings, it amplifies, one, the amount of kids there, and two, how obnoxious, rambunctious the kids are. Uh, excellent vocabulary. Wow. During the dress, guys, also, those who are in Utah, you don't understand. The average amount of kids is like six per family. Yeah. Right. And on lots my of, street, kids. my neighbors who are my age, they're 28 years old, maybe 29, maybe 30, six kids. They started popping them out when they were 20. Mm-hmm. My mom started having kids at 19, had six kids. <laughs> it's just what you do in Utah. Everyone just has six kids, and they're all under 30. The parent is. Anyway. <laughs> During the dress rehearsal, the children's choir only needed to be in two songs, meaning that the rest of the time, they didn't have to do anything and essentially just roam free. Let me tell you, they were evil little devils. They kept on running around me and bugging the crap out of my wife and I. She was on a second camera in the back of the hall, telephoto lens. So much so to where we couldn't get clean audio because of them screaming and yelling and running. And I had to be very creative when shooting video because everywhere I turned my camera, there was another child in the frame, whether blatantly going in front of me or standing by a violinist picking his nose. No joke. <laughs> I want to see that shot. <laughs> That's the, you don't write that much detail unless you've lived it. <laughs> <laughs> you this it. one child in a John Deere green shirt somehow ended up being in 20 plus shots of mine and I didn't even notice half of them until the editing room. I wonder if he snuck into the frame with his demonic telepathic <laughs> abilities. <laughs> I wish I could attach photos here to show. DM me the photos. Maybe, yeah, maybe if you DM and this makes it onto the social media, we'll, we'll pop the the, uh, the photo onto it. Um, Man. That sucks. Uh, question, question. How is this so close to home to us in Utah? And we've never heard of what a, a cantata is. Have you ever heard of a cantata? I've never heard of a cantata in all my life. <laughs> what valley of Utah is this in? Just never like heard a, of that in my like life. Probably like a Tuella thing. Probably Tuella, yeah. Tuella or, yeah. I've, or Spanish Fark or where does I've, Sam I've live? Ruled. Salem? Nephi? Santa Quinn. Santa, Santa Quinn. Quinn. Somewhere I've just lived in there. Utah my whole life. And never heard of I've that. never, never <laughs> Maybe just yeah. That's so sad. That's it's, a it's different getting hard level. To, yeah. But yeah. um 
because I always try to disvalidate or devalue, dis discredit the person who submitted these stories. Yeah. You just you get what you what you sign up for, you know? You're you're yeah. you're hired to film this huge event with a bunch of kids. That's what that's what it is. My frustration for weddings is because kids shouldn't be at weddings. There's no need for kids at weddings. Um right. Other than maybe like a a uh a warm little you know, here's what you have to look forward to towards the bride and groom, <laughs> maybe. Um <laughs> but like they there really isn't a place for them other than maybe tossing a few rose petals. But at this event, it's like that's you gotta walk in this event knowing you're about to be a babysitter for for who knows how long. Godspeed. Yeah, I think you've gotten all your frustrations out about kids at weddings. There really like isn't that much more to say about oh, this. Watch me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. The John Deere. Did you know? Did you know, Jacob? Um, did you know that Ronald Reagan? This is going back to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. How'd you say it? Do you know that? Ronald Reagan, 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 Reagan. is it Reagan. Reagan? I think it's Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. So did you know that Ronald Reagan called the Mormon Tabernacle choir America's choir? Wow. Did you know It that? really is. Dude, listen Reagan to them sing the, the Star greats. Spangled Banner. Yeah. Goosebumps. My favorite <sighs> yeah. song, guys, you, after this video, YouTube search Mormon Tabernacle choir with Andrea Bocelli. I think it's him. What? That's the guy who sings Operate. I don't know. Andrea Bocelli. I think that's him. It's the most beautiful well, song. Wait. Have you, have you listened to Motab doing Lord of the Rings? Yes. <laughs> Dude. Oh, uh, my goodness. Andrea. I'll listen to that right now. I'll just hold the microphone up to the speaker. Yeah, yeah. Andrea Bocelli, the Mormon type of choir, the Lord's Prayer. It is wild. Most beautiful, wow. God-given talent I've ever heard in my entire life. In fact, I'm going to listen to that today on repeat. Yeah. Well, we got some good recommendations for you. If you want to listen to Motab, <laughs> that song. Here's a DM. Well, rings, we're going to link Motab Star below. Banner, they're actually come out found. Uh, they're actually with me to not even tie. called Mormon Tabernacle <laughs> Choir anymore. They rebranded into the Salt Lake Tabernacle Choir, I think. Uh, the more the tabernacle at Temple Square. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, the tabernacle, tabernacle choir, choir at Temple Square. Temple Square. Nah, it doesn't yeah. flow. If you it's have okay. questions about uh, the tabernacle choir uh, <laughs> or the the church in general, just <laughs> just shoot a DM and we're gonna send DM missionaries us. your yeah. way. <laughs> All of our listeners gonna knock on the door. We'll <laughs> yeah. Just DM us your address uh, and your those uh, local missionaries that you've seen. They'll be at your door tomorrow, baby. <laughs> Pretty sure Grumbo has had his fair share of interactions with missionaries. I think he has too. Anyway, all right, last story. All right, last one. This is from a videographer. This is miscellaneous. Let's see if it asks me any personal questions because all of these have been spot on so yeah. far. All right, this is a wild one. I'm a wild guy, Jacob. This is meant for me. <laughs> well, I'd say you're pretty vanilla. <laughs> okay. <laughs> pretty milk toast. All right, I was filming a wedding and I mic'd the officiant before the wedding. <laughs> Off to a good start. Everything was great during the ceremony, but after about 15 minutes, the officiant comes running up to me, pointing at the lav mic, saying, is this thing still on? I said yes, to which he replied, oh no. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh no. Father, tell me you'd... <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> you're going to start tossing some Hail Marys his way? I'm not sure what, what Hail Mary is, but just... Oh my goodness. Okay, to which he replied, it's it's worth noting that when this was typed out, is this thing still on? It had a question mark and an exclamation, really emphasizing the panic this in this pastor just had uh, like a, a voice. pale white face. <laughs> okay. He yells, is this thing on? I said, yes, to which he replies, oh no, please tell me you don't send this audio file to the bride and groom. Oh, Out boy. of straight face said, it's already been sent, sir. <laughs> yeah, we're live streaming. <laughs> You're on Facebook CNN guy. right now. <laughs> Cops show up five minutes later, lock them up. Okay, I started laughing, and I told them that I only used the portion from the ceremony. Naturally, of course, naturally, when I got home, I listened to the officiant's love audio. As it turns Toxic out... Toxic individual. I, I would have done the same thing. I have audio footage of him raiding the bar, <laughs> raiding the bar at a five-star hotel and admitting that he tried to talk the groom <laughs> out of marrying the bride. 
<laughs> As you're about to marry them. Who, who's this officiant man? Just, is it his dad? I don't know why. I'm just I'm picturing it as like a, a Catholic father. Like I don't know why. It probably isn't, but that's how I'm picturing it. A guy fully robed at a bar, slinging back some whiskey. Yeah, I tried to talk him out of it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm picturing that. What was the what was the officiant's relation to the the groom? Is it just some regular like Joe Schmo or is it a relative? Hopefully, a relative. Because <laughs> if it's some ra- if it's some random dude, that is so funny to me. Oh my Man, goodness! Doesn't like the bride. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, from the officiant trying to talk him out of marrying the bride, and then he has to go on and talk about how beautiful marriage is and how much they're gonna love each other, and <laughs> probably like tell the story of like what brought them together. Don't all officiants do that? Kind of like uh, say some history. Probably, uh, probably. Oh my goodness, that is so funny. Raiding the bar at a five-star hotel and admitting he tried to talk the groom out of marrying the bride. That's that's rich. That is rich. I don't... Nathan, how I've, close do you have to be to somebody to talk somebody out of marriage? To talk him out? That's why I was wondering, like, what's, what's the relationship of this officiant to the groom? You better be, like, the father or something. You have to be blood. You have to be blood. But then do you... Or, like, a brother, like, friend... Yeah. But what if your kid's happy? What if it, what if you're the father and your kid's happy? Do you drive a wedge bet- betwixt you or do you just let them learn? No, I think, I mean, if your kid is genuinely happy, then you, no, you got to put away your pride and say, my kid's happy and I'm happy. But what I'm if happy. they're just the worst person? I would hope I raise my kids to be able to recognize that. Uh, only time will tell. <laughs> Got to hope, right? When I'm, th- yeah, thirty years later. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's tough. Yeah, if your kid's happy, you just gotta I mean, put your pride away and say, "My kid's happy. I'm happy. They're happy." What if you heard that audio later in life? What if it is the dad marrying them? Like, like, dude, man. That'd what be if like you? A, just, what if you just lived your life knowing that your father-in-law tried to talk your wife out of marrying you? Gosh, dude. That would sting. That'd, that'd be like the This Is Us, Randall finding out Rebecca knew his dad all along. Never told him. <laughs> Excellent episode. Trail. Fantastic episode. Gosh, Guys, I after you're done listening series. to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, turn on This Is Us <laughs> <laughs> and binge it. It's the best TV show I've ever seen. It's the most real. It is. It is a great it's TV show. It's family oriented. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful show. Every episode, it's I think just, I, I, saw, I, I cried. Every single episode. It's, it's, it's emotionally manipulative. If you can't handle it. Storytelling at its finest. Oh, Character it's development at its fa- finest for most of them. Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite episodes still is, is Randall when he goes golfing with his yeah. uh, golf, his company oh. buddies. Pl- plays down to their level. Gosh, I love that. Tanner just yeah, finished it. I, uh, and he was just like, man, that train episode is just the most wild. The train episode. The very ending. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Man. Dude, even just the very first episode, Dr. K talking about the lemons. Oh, it's the best episode. I teared up. Ugh. Remember when we started watching that? We re-watch. started watching that together in Colorado, yeah. our first destination wedding ever. Yeah. In that little Airbnb basement. In Two Aspen. bros watching This Is Us together. Where crying. the beer flows like wine. Where the beer flows like wine. Where we the water. salmon of Capistrano. <laughs> <laughs> talking about a place P-P-T. called Aspen. <laughs> oh no, Lord! The French are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Such we just watched it last movie. night. Gosh. Oh man! All right. Yeah. Lock them up. Put that was good. You guys. <laughs> thank you for submitting. I love how these are becoming like meticulously. There we go. Meticulously written there stories. There you go. With paragraphs. Thank you for the grammar. With prefaces. With, you know, parentheses, with, you know, call outs. I just love it. I just love the detail. This is, this is beautiful. It's this so good. It's beautiful. So please keep submitting and we will keep ripping off the vendor table. 
Just kidding. But we love you, Vendor Table, and if you ever see this, we would love to have you on the show. It does sting, though, when you feel like you have a cool idea, and then you're like, oh, there are people already doing this. It's already been doing. It really does sting. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, nothing is original these days. Nothing. I I, I feel like if there is the small chance they have seen us, like, they probably just know us, maybe from the industry. Um, In fact, just the uh, the other week, it was... uh, AJ Inglioga? I, yeah, I don't remember his the name. DJ but, guy. But yeah, yeah, he was on their show. He was he was with them and he was talking about I loved his take actually. Like what is the difference between a filmmaker, a videographer, and a wedding cinematographer? And he's Oh just sorry, like, yeah, the videographer. Gonna, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's just like, this is gonna ruffle some feathers, but it's just ego. Like we're all just videographers who film events. You can call yourself a filmmaker, a wedding filmmaker, a wedding cinematographer, but we're just videographers. Right. And, and um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I and, awkwardly and then, admit that was me, definitely, for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We all have. But in, in, in the comments, AJ then went on to say, like, we can all agree that Sharon from Fiore Films is the only true right. wedding cinematographer. And we featured her in our Facebook group. Uh, I connected AJ with our Facebook group and he's, he's a homie. Like he's, he's active there. He commented. So like, I, I truly don't feel like if the vendor table hosts saw this or any of their guests saw it, they'd feel threatened in any way. No, We're all just they shouldn't be. They got, they got everything right. on us. We're just having fun. Dude, here. they, they get so much engagement. Yeah. We're just those, you know, middle late age, 20 white know. dudes with a podcast. It just stings. It, it's, I remember too, like when we were on my vows and I wanted to do that workshop and I was like, I have this idea for a workshop, yada, yada. Then we went and filmed for Brit and she's like, yeah, it's actually for a workshop. And then we saw the workshop yeah. and it was Emma and that was our first yeah. meeting Emma. I was like, well, F me. It's already right. been, she's it's already being exactly. done. I'm like, cool. And right. I felt so, but then right. I was like, you know, put that behind me. Let's meet this girl. And now we're great <laughs> friends. So. <laughs> Let's beat this girl. <laughs> no, I said meet, meet, oh. <laughs> meet, like, meet this individual. Ch- chick, have you said that out loud? <laughs> Let's beat this chick. <laughs> now nah, meet, beat, meet. Yeah, meet, meet, and then we did meet her, and it's it's been fantastic. We just yeah. shot a wedding at the yeah. Breakers with her. She's awesome. Um, cool, you guys. Continue to submit your stories. We love them. We appreciate you. Thank you for listening, and. Uh, yeah, I hope you took notes on all the things we told you to go watch instead of our podcast. Mooka's podcast, and to Motap, to. and This Is Us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll probably not see you next week. <laughs> like, I was big fans of The Kitchen, but they just put me on so many other paths. Now it's just they, better. They, like, well, they dissuaded me from listening to their own podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And continue. All right, Jacob. We'll do so. All right. Love you, bye. I'll see you next week. Love you, bye. <laughs>